Good evening and welcome to a very special Pure Sport. For the next hour, we'll look back on the life of the man from Uruguay. We'll hear interviews with Danny Bagara's wife, his sister and his son. Plus, we'll look back on an emotional day at Edgeley Park in 2007 when county fans paid their own tribute to their former manager. Joining me in the Pure Sports studio is Stockport County supporter Phil Brennan, whose latest book, The Man from Uruguay, tells Danny's story, not only his time here in Stockport, but as a player, coach, manager and scout right around the world. Phil, thank you so much indeed for your time. A biographer wants their subject to have a rich and varied life, and you certainly find that with Danny. To county fans, he will always be thought of as their manager. But in fact, his career in football started out a long time before that as a player. Yeah, I mean, he, he signed for Racing of uh, Montevideo. I do struggle with that sometimes. I did all right there. Don't ask me to say it again. At the age of 14, and he played for the first team at 15 and helped his the Racing Club get promotion as champions of Division 2 when he was only 15 and made his debut in the first division age 16. So uh, he knew his way around the pitch at the age of 16. He went on to play for Spanish clubs and as we read in the first chapter of your book, wonderful stories that come out from Danny's family, including the fact that his move to Spain was almost scuppered because of the fact of who his parents were and the fact they were Uruguayan. There was trouble getting a visa. Yeah, it was. Uh, he'd been looked at by teams in Italy as well, but uh, it, his his mum had turned down a move to Italy, and uh, it, when he found out about it, he wasn't very happy. But the foreign rule back then was even stricter than it was in the eighties when there was only three allowed. So. He, he, he did get there, um, and even when he got to, a, he agreed to move. Even that was fraught with a bit of problems because his mum thought he was too young to go, uh, and she pulled a bit of a flanker by telling uh, Rayo Mallorca that they could have him as long as they took his older brother as well. So, <laughs> two for the price of one. There are some great anecdotes in here that you could only really get from Danny's family. As I say, we're going to hear from them a bit later. He obviously played on the continent for some time, which, bearing in mind that he spoke Spanish, in Mediterranean way of life, it perhaps wasn't a massive culture shock. But what's fascinating is the switch to Luton when he became coach in 1973. I mean, what a culture shock that must have been for a young man still. Yeah, I mean, the thing is, he'd had a really bad injury when he was finishing at Tenerife, and uh, because he'd married Jan by then, and they got two young kids, uh, and Jan's family had all moved down to St Albans, they'd agreed, that because uh, Jan's background was travel agency, and uh, Danny was a, really loved travel, they were going to open a travel agency in Luton, and, uh, sorry, in St Albans, and uh, a friend of Jan's family was actually the chief scout at Luton, and uh, Danny being Danny just asked this chap one day they were having lunch and he said uh, can I come in train to keep fit and <laughs> don't think he understood that professional football in England not only did you not just turn up but if you were a foreigner you had no chance of just turning up so uh, it, it, he got in through the back door basically the scout had a look through uh, Danny's scrapbooks and uh, thought well he, he's potential you know and, and they took him on as a as a well <laughs> they didn't even take him on as a coach to start with them um, the chairman of Luton Town actually got him a job as a van driver's assistant so that he could get um, a t so he could pay his t stamp basically uh, so Luton couldn't employ him until he had a job so he actually was fictitiously named as a van driver or a van driver's assistant and then uh, ended up going on to be a coach at Luton. I love some of the stories when football was football back in the 70s and 80s. You wouldn't get that kind of thing. Now, perhaps another thing that you wouldn't get in these days, when a player has finished his career, he's often done his coaching badges already. He almost seems to walk straight into a managerial position, perhaps in some cases before they're ready for it. But you look at Danny Bagara, 73 was the time that he got involved in Luton. He became the first foreign coach the FA had ever employed in the 1980s and really learned his craft. It was 15 years of coaching before he actually became Rochdale manager. Yeah, he's certainly done his time. I mean, he always used to say, and, and he still said it when he was at Stockport County, that he always thought he was born too, too soon. He, he thought all his ideas, and when you, you, know, you go through the book countless times, there's, he mentions long before we started putting mini soccer into practice in this country, he was talking about putting mini soccer into practice when he was at the FA and you know he, he probably was born too soon but he you know he had done 15 years hard graft as a coach as an assistant as a scout you know so he he, he probably deserved his chance and and I think you know when you look at, at it now 
he probably did have to do that extra work because he was a foreigner. It was a coup when he got a job at the FA. I mean, he was coaching the under-18s and the under-20s of England, being a guy from Uruguay. <laughs> yes, it, what happened, he'd, he'd, he'd done his early badges at, at Lillishaw and he'd done them with some very famous, um, like now, I mean, I've got pictures of him with like Nobby Styles, Howard Kendall, people like that, that he did his early badges with when they were step, starting out as managers. Um, but what, what they'd done is his sessions had taken everybody's imagination. His, his warm-up sessions in particular were different to anybody else's. So he'd actually, you know, he'd, he'd actually caught the FA's eye just when he was doing his initial badges. And it was only, he, he was working with, uh, he'd done some work with Derby County when they were in the European Cup. And uh, his name was being mentioned in, you know, obviously in the corridors at the FA. And they were looking for a support coach. Uh, Luton actually had proposed him, but the FA had already got his name down. So it, Luton just more or less sealed the deal for him. So yeah, he was, you know, and I've spoken to quite a few players that like Glyn Snowden and people, Ian Snowden, I should say, who were on those tours. And they would, they just they were fascinated by the things he could do with the ball. We are skimming through some fantastic history and some fantastic stories. And the nice thing about the book, Phil, is that actually each of the chapters you're able to devote to a, a different part of, of Danny's life. And you really get under the skin of the man, but also you hear from his family, from his friends, from his colleagues, from the players that he's coached. And actually, in their own words, you get a real sense of what Danny was like. Yeah, I mean, the thing is, is that we got approached by quite a lot of people. So in in effect, we've done the chapters in chronological order, and we've tried to speak to people from each place he, he worked. Uh, but we we were inundated, so we've actually got a memory chapter as well at the end, where we've given a chapter especially to those who've taken the time and effort to give us stories. So it, even when the story's finished, there's actually further stories from people who, were, and some of them are quite comical as well, as you can imagine. Well, one of the highlights of the book, certainly for Stockport County fans, is going to be Danny Bagara's time at Edgeley Park. Looking back into the recent history before he took over, Colin Murphy, of course, had stopped the rot and that possible slide into the non-league. And then Asa Hartford and Len Cantella took over. But it was when Danny came in, he took County to the next level. But, I mean, let's not forget, Phil, even at the time that Danny took over, there was a little bit of controversy about why. Yeah, there was a lot. <laughs> and to be fair, you know, I, I'll be, I'll admit, I was one of those discerning voices because Asa was doing a decent job. You know, we were always in and around the top ten, and he'd been brought in by Dave Hunt, and all the board at the time were were all local businessmen. And then um, Brendan Elwood and his Sheffield consortium took over, and before you knew it, Asa was out of a job, and it, there was a lot of people concerned because Ace had seemed to be doing a good job, and we we were fairly steady. We weren't. We certainly weren't near the bottom of the league for a lot for the first time in a long time. And there were quite a few readers' letters, and I've used a few of them in the book. There were some really vitriolic letters in the paper, you know, go back to Rochdale and stuff. And unfortunately for Danny, when he came from Rochdale, we were about five or six places above Rochdale. When at the end of the season, we were closer to the bottom. And Rochdale were about five or six places above us, so there were still letters coming at the end of his first season about what, why have we taken this man on, um, you know? And we've covered that in great deal because it wouldn't have been fair to Dan to to pretend that the start was anything but less than ordinary. It was it was a dreadful start. We didn't win a game in his first eleven games. I suppose that's a case of the the coaching methods and and the things that he was trying to do needing time to bed in. How did the club take to that culture shift, if you like, of, of suddenly a foreign manager with his, his different ideas, a different way of thinking? I think, uh, I mean, he, he brought a lot of players with him. He brought players from Rochdale who he'd taken to Rochdale from Sheffield United. So he, he'd got his own little sort of disciples, if you like, people like David Frayne and Chris Beaumont who, who had got used to the way he was. And I think that's a clever move from Dan because he's brought players in that he knew. They knew how he worked. I mean, one of the first things he did at Stockport County was stop the players walking around with bare feet. And now that sounds daft, but you know, he would make them wear flip flops because he wouldn't. He didn't want injuries to feet, didn't want diseases to feet and stuff. And little things like that he'd brought with him from Spain. He paid attention to detail, and I think because he believed in the way he was doing things, and because he'd brought this little uh, influx of players with him, five or six players with him that knew of the way he worked. When those players are in, other players find it a lot easier to work with them. I think you know, as a football manager, that you've made an impact on the club when 
fans even today start referring to your time as an era. You weren't just the next manager on the block. You've come in and you must have created something in order to have your time described as an era. Yeah, I mean, it, it, the sad thing is he's still the second longest serving manager in the history of the football club and we're over 130 years old and it, he was only here for six years. And, that, you know, it's a, it's a shame because that does say a lot about the club in, in, in general. But, Dan, I, I don't think there'll be another manager, you know, not in the next sort of 10, 15 years that'll have the effect that Dan's had on the club. And, you know, he he did create a special atmosphere around the place. Um, he obviously gave us a lot of good times. Um, and it was sad that it all ended. But, you know, um, let's be grateful for the time he was here, I'd say. So when it came to writing about Danny leaving Edgeley Park, and, I mean, what was said in the papers at the time was there was an incident at a hotel and Brendan Elwood says his position was untenable. How much have you actually wanted to say, how much have you been able to say about the incidents that took place at that time, which are still a source of interest for Stockport County fans? Well, I'm hoping that we've addressed it in the right way because we've used articles that the papers gave out at the time and we've used articles that came out after the tribunal. And in between, we've only dealt with facts. And, you know, at the end of the day, it was easy for me to look at, I had all the witness statements, I've seen everything that could have possibly been seen. And I just thought that, you know, having discussed it with the family, because the the family weren't, you know, I'll be honest with you, the family weren't very happy that we had to talk about it. But at the end of the day, it's Danny's career, and it's part of his career, and it's not a nice part of his career, but it happened. So we agreed that we would go with the factual uh, statements from the tribunal and from the subsequent appeal. And I'll, I'll tell you now, the people will be very interested because it's it's there in black and white what actually did happen. Um, and unfortunately, you know, a great manager lost his job and shouldn't have done. Dave Jones, who was coach at the time, took over, having learned his trade under Danny, was more successful because County went higher up in the leagues, but... The question when you're enjoying a glass of port over the festive season, Phil, is was Begara's achievement the greater because of the position that County were in when he took over versus Dave Jones' league success? I would always say, Danny, um, and I think people of my generation would always say, Danny, yes, times under Dave were phenomenal and, and, you know, Dave definitely built on the foundations that Danny had laid and Dave's time... 96-97 96-97 was unbelievable and probably better individually than any other season that Dan gave us. But for the six years that he was here, we never... I mean, for the first time ever in 20 years, we actually won more games than we'd lost in Danny's first full season. And 20 years, you know, the first time that we'd actually won more games than we'd lost. And that that's an incredible statistic that he changed immediately. You know, that wasn't something that he did over a period of time. He changed that immediately. And, and those next five, six seasons were just unbelievable. And, and we were never outside the top six. We were always, you know, unfortunately in his last season, things weren't going as well as they could have been. But that doesn't mean we wouldn't have got better. And, and there's no, we will never know if Dan would have done what Dave did a couple of seasons later. But, you know, I'm grateful for Dave's time. Um, but... To have lived through Danny's time, I don't think I could have had a better time as a Stockport County fan. Danny, of course, stayed in the game after leaving County. He had numerous other managerial jobs and then went on to scout for the likes of Tottenham Hotspur and Wolverhampton Wanderers. And it's perhaps the legacy of the man that not only is he remembered here in Stockport where he was his most successful as a manager, but he's also remembered across the footballing industry. And, you know, you've been speaking to a number of significant names within the game who even at this stage are very happy to share their memories of Danny. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's well, you know yourself that the amount of times that we turned up at games in the last couple of seasons where there'd be somebody in the press box and, you know me, I, I always like to tell talk about the fact that I was writing this book and there was always somebody in the press box who had a story, wouldn't they? There was, you know, we would speak to, I mean, even in, we were at Gateshead once and Tony Kenworthy, who, who played for Dan and actually ended up managing with him at Grantham for a very short period of time. And he tells a, a nice little story that we've used in the memory, you know, in a memory section, I should say. And everywhere we went, there was somebody that either had a Danny Bagara story or just remembered something about him. Mick McCarthy he was the last person who Dan worked for and Mick was um, said has got a, ni- a really nice piece and we've used one of Mick's quotes on the back of the book because he Mick said that when he was first starting out in football as a young manager, coach manager, 
Dan was the first person who actually rang him and congratulated him on him, on getting a job. And he said, and I didn't really know him from Adam, but he'd obviously knew who I was. And he said, he took the time out to ring me. He said, and I never forgot that, that he had seen me around at games and thought, you know, this lad needs a little, little bit of a G up. He said, and when he ended up working for Mick, he said, I've never worked with anybody nicer in football. Um, and he must have worked with a lot of people. And the book does give you that opportunity, Phil, to learn more about Danny and his other aspects of his career away from Stockport County, but also, of course, just as a young man growing up. And there's some, some wonderful stories in there from his, his sister as well. But what the book probably does just confirm is, is what we all knew already, that there was something about Edgeley Park and Stockport County. It was the perfect fit at the perfect time for Danny Bagara. Oh, without a doubt. And uh, as I say, as one of those discerning voices in the first sort of end of that first season that he came in, the strange thing is, is at the end of that 11 games and he hadn't won a game, in the following pre-season, we'd won pretty much every game. I don't think we lost a pre-season game and we were talking about promotion. The same people that were saying, what was he doing here you know, at the end of the season before? So he, he knew how to win people over. He definitely knew how to win people over and, and he had a... A great smile and a great sense of humour, and, and you know, at the end of the day, he was he was a great man to work with, and I did that very briefly, um, and certainly to read about his life and and you know put it all together in black and white has been a pleasure.